What's up, everybody? My name is James, and I just want to welcome you to Tequila Talks. What this show is simply about is having honest, real conversations about life, about culture, about church, about faith, and many more things that I think you will enjoy engaging with. So welcome to the show. Hope you enjoy it. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another week of Tequila Talks. We're super excited to be here with you. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, how's everybody doing? How's your, <laughs> how's your week? What's Man, I'm fun. good. I'm doing... How you doing, Jer? I'm about 15 pounds heavier. Because <laughs> of the Thanksgiving? All that turkey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was like two weeks ago, bro. You still got the weight on? Oh, oh yeah. I that, stuff gym, bro? that stuff don't go quick. Okay. I didn't know that. stuff doesn't go that. quick. I know. What? It's like, how are you doing? Feeling 15 pounds heavier? I know. It could be <laughs> spiritual or yeah, emotional, yeah. but in I this mean, case, it's physical. It's okay. physical. Oh, oh very much man. Completely. Yeah. Could have been emotional. turkey's holding on! Come on. It does. But I'm doing yeah. good. Doing good? Doing good. Yeah. Nice. Love it. James, you're good. Back with the fam. A couple weeks now. Yeah, it's been it's been a dream. Nice. Love Amazing. my kids. Kenny's hilarious. Love my wife. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. Mandy, you? Say. How are you feeling? Doing well? Good. Yeah, doing well. Good. Things Come are on. good. Yeah. I How about it. you? Doing great. Good. Living the dream. This mustard yellow has got to be one of my favorite colors. Really? Just wow. going to point that out there. Just a, it is fall. I feel like wow. an autumn leaf. You know? And you look like yeah. one. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. Uh, <laughs> for, those, uh, for those joining us, maybe for the first time, or maybe you've been tuning in for the series, we've been in the midst of these conversations. Mm -hmm. Tequila Talks. We've, in particular, been talking about justice through the lens of the parables of Jesus. Right. I think it's a really interesting angle. Uh, mm -hmm. to approach the parables and to mm -hmm. think about them. You know, we've said almost every time, one of the ways in which we're almost trained, I might say indoctrinated in the church, mm, hey. uh, to read these parables is to read them as like about heaven or a trite moral platitude, something like that. Whereas in reality, Jesus is always talking to us about what it looks like mm -hmm. when the kingdom right. comes here on earth as it right. is in heaven. When right. the kingdom breaks in, when you're in a community that looks like the kingdom, yeah. Jesus is telling us stories about what that looks like. Right. What I love about stories is they really evoke imagination. Like, they really get us dreaming and thinking about Did what watch that? God's kingdom no. and economy is like. Yeah. No, what's that? Imagination Station? Adventures in Odyssey? No? Oh, Nobody? never. I've heard, I've heard you say it, but no. Mandy? Afraid oh, yeah, not. Afraid okay. not. No. Yeah, you're like, yeah. you didn't yeah. grow up with that. <laughs> I've heard about it, though. Friends who, like, listen it's to the tapes. Yeah, I want to name my kid Whitaker if I have a son. Okay. Because of Mr. Whitaker. Wow. Wit. Yeah. It's deep. Wits, That's fascinating. Cool. Kareen is not into it, but no. I love it. So full circle then. Obviously, like, these stories, uh, they spark our imagination. Yes. They get us thinking. Right. And Jesus isn't yes. offering us concrete stories necessarily about right. things that happened. Yeah. He's trying to say, he's trying to uh, stir our imaginations for what it really looks like. Right. So right. he'll use metaphors and symbols and ideas. Shit. So I just before we get to the parable today, we're talking about the parable <laughs> of the talents. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, like, for, for you guys... Um, Maybe one of, something about this series that has stuck out to you yeah. or something about reading the parables this way that's been helpful for yeah. you so far as we've been on the journey? I think that like even just taking it upon ourselves to rethink what we think we already know yeah. um, right. has been yeah. really important for mm -hmm. me. And even not growing up in church. So I can imagine like if you've been hearing these stories since you could process information you know what I mean yeah. mm -hmm. but even for me for the last you know 12 years there I've, I've heard of a lot of these parables a lot of these stories and just kind of whether it's because they were communicated in a certain way or whether it's just how I interpreted them I just kind of decided that's what they meant right. and just kind totally. of stuck with that and so just even opening my like heart and my mind to be like okay Lord like what else if you like is this what you were saying and even if it is like what else are you saying yeah um has mm -hmm. just been really cool Oh, that's great. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd piggyback off, off Mandy there. Piggyback. Yeah. Yeah. I. You jump uh, definitely. On her. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Let's not physically <laughs> p p piggyback, considering the beginning of this podcast. But, um, yeah, they've been super. It, this whole process and conversation has been super, super helpful, simply for that fact of like a new lens of looking yeah. through a parable. Because yeah. again, like how you said, they can we can be trained or indoctrinated with these things. I think yeah. I've realized. Um, how limited hmm. the view um, through viewing through these parables has been yeah. simply just because they were taught maybe in a Sunday school setting totally. or like the way I heard them at a younger age. So I'm like, oh man, like yeah. the kingdom of heaven is, is like, yeah. so there's so much more to yeah. what Jesus is communicating. I love that than phrase, right? The kingdom of heaven is like dot, 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 dot. Yeah, exactly. And then Jesus offers us this tantalizing sort of stirring, yeah. sometimes disturbing story. Yeah. Yeah. And I like Confusing. what you're saying too, because I do think it is work, you know, to say, 
um, you know, maybe the lens that I was offered to read these or the way that I had been reading them. It wasn't the whole picture. Right. Or maybe it was right. just slanting in the wrong mm -hmm. direction. Or maybe, and I love what you just said, Jer, they had no practical application for my current life mm -hmm. because I was trained to Did think about that? them as something for the future. Right. Mm -hmm. No, but that was the lens you were offered. Right. If the totally. parables are about heaven, right, right, right. Uh, and even this one today, I think people read it to be about heaven. If that's what it's about, then it doesn't have any really practical application for something like justice right. here yeah. and now right. Right. Or, or how we're to be conduits of the kingdom of God and the yeah. presence right. of God here in the right. present. What right. about you, James? Honestly, I've just loved the thought-provoking conversations like we had one with Change is Good, the Heather and Rachel, mm -hmm. like on equal opportunity and that the master went and pursued people. Mm -hmm. Again, I didn't think about it that way. Again, I just thought about it. Oh, people getting into heaven. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've loved that it's brought it down to earth in some sense yeah. for me that mm -hmm. it's like, no, it's actually here and now. So right. I've just really enjoyed that aspect Amazing. of so the good. dialogues that we've been having. Cool. Okay, well, I'm going to offer you another one. Perfect. So get ready. Let's if you're go. at home, maybe posture yourself. You can open it up if you want to. Buckle up. Uh, we're in the parable of the talents. Uh, here we go. Here we go. This is what Jesus says. For it is just like, and that's the kingdom of heaven, it is just like a man about to go on a journey who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. To mm. one, he gave five talents. Man, I want to know what journey that guy's going yeah, on. Yeah, literally. How lit would that be? To one, he gave five talents. To another two and another one, each according to their own abilities. Mm -hmm. And he went on his journey. And immediately the one who had received the five talents went and traded them and gained five more talents. Dude was, dude was on Forex, man. He's in the stocks. In the same <laughs> manner, the one who had received two talents gained two more. But the one who had received one talent went away, dug a hole in the ground, and he hid his master's money. Mm -hmm. Relatable. Now, after a long time, the master <laughs> of those slaves came, and he settled accounts with them. The one who had received the five talents came up and brought five more talents, saying, Master, you've entrusted five talents to me. See, I've gained five more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You are faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Also, the one who had received the two talents came up and said, Master, you entrusted two talents to me. See, I've gained two more talents. And his master said to him, well done, good and faithful slave. Mm. You're faithful with a few things, a few things, and I will put you in charge of many things. Mm. Enter into the joy of your master. Mm. And the one who had received the one talent came up and said this, master, I knew that you're a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. Mm. I was afraid and I went away and I hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. But his master answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew that I reap where I did not sow and I gather where I scatter no seed. Then you ought to have put my money in the bank and on my arrival, I would have received my money back with interest. Therefore, take away the talent from him and give it to the one who now has 10. Mm. For to everyone who has more shall be given and he will have an abundance. But from the one who does not have, even what he does have shall be taken away. Whoa. Throw out the worthless slave into the outer darkness in that place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Wow. So typically at this moment, <sighs> Makes sense. we start with Makes one sense. question. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe what do you hear or what comes to mind or what yeah. stands out to you when you hear this parable read for the first time, this story trying of Jesus? Trying not to insert the people. It's actually, it's actually a discipline. Like trying not to be like, oh, this is God and this is of course, me yeah. and right. this is this is so difficult. Mm. But honestly, the first thing I think of is like that I was kind of like, ooh, was like, why is there anything specific about him saying slave? Mm. Mm. Slave. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, can I make a comment about that? Of course. That's so what I'm, I re wanted I'm reading from the NASB here, yeah. uh, which is if any translation Most is accurate. really wooden, it's it tries to be as close as possible, right. including word for word including words. ambiguities. Yeah. Now, mm. there's no such thing as a word for word translation. No. This is maybe as close as we do get sure. to that. But the word is doulos in Greek. We've probably all heard this word before. Mm -hmm. In the first century context, this metaphor for slavery would be as offensive as it is in 2020. Mm -hmm. So I want to say that, like Jesus using a story about masters and slaves. Um, is uh, it would have graded against the first century audience in the same way that it does against us. Mm -hmm. And I think that we should experience that. I don't think we should dismiss it away. It's like, right. this is an uncomfortable word. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we try to clean it up by using the word servant, and that's right. okay, 
but it has very similar connotations. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I think that we just need to accept the reality that, okay, there is a certain dynamic and relationship here that isn't necessarily mm-hmm. abusive. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily the kind of slavery that people would have known in America or that people are protesting against now, which yeah. we should protest against these things. Um, it's, it's different still, but nonetheless, it's an uncomfortable word. Right. Certainly. So I want to say that. Yeah. To clarify for anybody at home or for, Perfect. you know, when I Did read that it. answer your question? As I read totally. it, you know what, Jer, to be honest with you, when I read it in 2020, I feel immense Oof. discomfort. Yeah, I think it's something that could definitely rub a different way. For so sure. I think context of that is amazing. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay, Mandy, what about you? What, what comes to mind when you hear this parable? This is a hard parable for me. Yeah. It always has been. <laughs> like every time I've ever heard it, like, and kind of thinking about it even in the traditional way that I've thought about it, um, I feel it's convicting for me because sometimes Mm -hmm. my natural personality is to be the one who hides it away. Maybe because I'm like, that's the safe option, Mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, well, and cause like sometimes reading this story, I'm like, the reality is you don't always get a return on your investments, you know? Whereas like in this story, they both did, but they could have lost it all. So I'm like, isn't there some validity in what he did? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm like, he, he, he was trying to do the safe thing, which in my like my head, I'm kind of like he's just he's just Mutual trying to funds. be responsible. You know? Yeah, I don't we'll, know. we'll come back around to this. But yeah. let me ask you: Do you think that Jesus doesn't go there because in his mentality in the kingdom of God, you will always double if you actually put in the work? Probably. Interesting. It's not about losing. It's not actually. about yeah. Mm. No, that's or not totally. winning or losing in the way that we think about it. Right. Yeah. I'm just asking this now. I mean, hmm. I mean, yeah, that's probably part of it. I think like right. yeah, but when I read it, is like a completely like earthly mm. story. Yeah. I'm like, poor is this? Guy. yeah, I'm like this poor guy is just like, it's just, just, just trying trying to, to, just, yeah, but just trying to be frugal. Yeah. I think, just trying to be frugal, I mean, I, yeah. I, I'm with you guys. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, that's uh, when I'm reading it, the words harsh master stand out to mm-hmm, me and being mm-hmm. afraid of yeah. said harsh master. Right. Yes. Right. And that was the thing that stood out to me. It's like it, this master reaped where he did not sow and, and, uh, of, with the seeds. Reed. Yeah, it didn't scatter like, seeds there. Did, yeah. So I'm like, man, what does that even mean? Right. Like, mm-hmm. what? Like, was this master just a genius? And you know, or what did that mean okay. yeah. to yeah. that slave? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I wasn't sure exactly. It's the first that just highlighted to me in this moment. Yeah. So let's come back around then. So Jesus is saying the kingdom of heaven is like a man who goes on a journey. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. It's not about the destination. That's real. That's so interesting, isn't it? It's yeah. About I, the I journey. Mean, I mean, I think that's definitely part of it, but. But there is something about the fact that the master is not absent or not present during mm. the story. Mm. Mm. Thanks a lot, God. I mean, <laughs> seemingly absent, you know, <laughs> sure. uh, a task that's been entrusted to a group of people. Right, right. right. So I don't know. Let, um, I just what? had that revelation the other day where yeah. it's like, the, or somebody was telling this story. It's like, yeah, God gets to heaven and Jesus is talking to the, all the angels. And it's so they're like, all right, you're back, Jesus. What's the plan? He's like, I left 12 people to do it. I and mean, we're going to see what happens. No, no, no. Like, what's the plan? He's like, no, no, no. That Those is the 12. Plan. Yeah. That's the plan. Right. Anyways. <laughs> I love it. Um, I, so as I was reading this and, you know, we were chatting in preparation, I was thinking about just talking about stewardship. Mm-hmm. Of course. I think mm-hmm. there's so much about this parable. It's about hu- stewardship. But more than that, human responsibility. Mm-hmm. So I'd love to hear uh, you guys on this a little bit. You know, I think Genesis chapter one offers us this clear window mm-hmm. into a God who by his very speech, spins a cosmos into existence. Right. He orders everything. He takes chaos and he dispels it. He mm. creates. He's mm. this beauty in the world. So he takes all these raw materials and he organizes them, and then he creates humanity as the centerpiece of his creation. Right. Mm. And he says, you will have dominion and rulership over all of this. So part of what I'm saying then is that God hands over the reins of the earth to humans. Right. Mm-hmm. How does that land for you? I mean, even, even in the context of the conversations we have in church. So I think this story is actually that Jesus is telling is riffing on that. We have a, a, a master, in this case, I'll say God, let's think cosmically, who creates a world and then he entrusts that world to humans. Right. Yeah. That guy must have not been prophetic. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what he was thinking about. We're just really trusting people, but it's more of a joke. I know he knew what he was doing. Yeah, of course. But he it's in, in it's insane to 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 I guess understand that because Jesus God had his angels who he didn't even trust them with mm-hmm. the earth. He decided to create a new creation that had one hundred percent free will, one hundred percent their own 
Now I know this can be debated, whatever. That's fine. We can get into that. But for all intents and purposes, they had a decision. They had a choice to make. Of course. And to then entrust the Earth's stewardship, the gardening, the animals, naming them, the, you know, if, if you look at the Genesis account story, um, it's, it's pretty insane to realize that, oh, you would just trust that to some dude that he just created. Yeah, of course. Pretty mm-hmm. insane. Yeah, I think it's, it's even interesting with the conversation we had a couple weeks ago about how subconsciously we can like put the responsibility right. on or, like organizations or systems or structures that are in place. Mm-hmm. When through this lens, God essentially is saying, I've entrusted you Jesus. with a responsibility and a stewardship. Yeah. yeah. And so it just brings back into like this weight to it, but also this like humbling, mm-hmm. trying to understand of like, okay, how much responsibility if God is entrusting me, mm-hmm. Jeremiah, right. Cody, James, Mandy, mm-hmm. um, how much am I supposed to own of that, like practically speaking? Mm-hmm. And what am I like, what does that look like with, when it comes to system structure organization? Obviously, there's yeah. like a practical yeah, yeah. outlet of that, but like, yeah. I think it just kind of like brings me back to this like, well, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. <laughs> and I feel yeah, like, honestly, that's why I said relatable yeah. with what Mandy said of like, yeah. shoot, I'm going to go hide and <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, figure it out. I'm going to wait. It's yeah. like, way hey. easier to do that. I'm just going to go be a barista. And I uh, right. love baristas. Shout out. But, you know, like... Something the, like, other than, like, the talent or yeah. something that you've right, maybe you've been, been gifted We all need baristas. To do. No, I wasn't trying to take a shot at baristas, but, you know. It's we depend heavily at exactly. this table it's on baristas. True. Seriously. I'm actually yeah. wishing I had a coffee right now. TV you know, page, it's, so it's interesting to me, in the same way that God creates all things, mm-hmm. and then he entrusts those things to humans. And the design mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. that the humans can't do any of this without partnership with him. Right. He right. is a partnering God. Right. Creation is made by mm-hmm. him. In the same way in this story... It's not as though they can multiply from nothing, right? right? That you actually the master money. gives mm-hmm. them something. Right. Yeah. There's a starting point and a dependency on the master right. that you couldn't have otherwise mm-hmm. with talents. So I think that's that, that piece too, right? It's not just like he hands it over to humans and he's like, let's see what see happens. Ya. It's actually like, here's a particular thing that I'm entrusting to mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. and a particular way that I'm asking you to serve and do things right. in the world mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. through dependence on me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, does, it draws us back to him, right? Yeah. 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 Like in order to thrive in this life, we mm-hmm. are drawn back into relationship with God. Absolutely. Yeah. But I thought it was interesting Interesting how at the top it says he gave them according to their ability. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, did I? Am I the guy that got one talent or ten? That's yeah. I'm that's like, what I was just thinking. Did I get? I'm like, did I get two hundred? Or did I get like two hundred? <laughs> I only two. saw five. Oh yeah. I don't no, know. but actually though, I thought about that too because then I wonder was there some comparison between those guys? Did yeah. they all know what each other was getting? Um, hmm. I don't know. That, I mean, obviously, that's not said there, but I'm like, if I was in that scene as one of those people, and I'm like, yeah. I got, I'm probably the guy that got one. And then yeah. I look, I'm like, how come you got three? Right. Mm-hmm. Like, well, th- would that stop me from being? Right. And yeah, exactly. But, and the funny thing is, like, we look throughout scripture and God somehow entrusts a high level of influence, authority, leadership with a very l- low level in some right. senses, I suppose, character to steward something David. or gifting oh, like Moses really, couldn't even talk yeah, that's or so like go down the list of ill-equipped, unexperienced, feeble attempts like the disciples, fishermen. Mm-hmm. He then entrusted the world with these cats after again, right. or Adam mm-hmm. was like, Adam and Eve didn't have much experience in project managing the world. He, yeah, he still entrusts that with right. these people. Yeah. So I, I guess but, that's the question then. Like, how how does how does this land for you? Like right. the parable is yeah. saying that not everyone it's has the same degree equal. of ability. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's part of what's being offered here as yeah. a window. Mm-hmm. Now we could we could democratize this and parse it out better. Right. Not everyone is called to the same thing. Right. We could right. say, and I sure. think that's fair to say. I think sometimes too, when we think, and I I have this conversation often with people in and around spiritual gifts. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants somebody else's spiritual gifts. Right. Mm-hmm. Everybody is upset by what they got, and yeah. I think especially in our church culture in 2020, mm-hmm. everyone wants to be the mouth, and nobody wants to be the feet or the right. hands or, right. the, or the unmentionable parts. Yeah. Okay. That, Sorry. You went there. Um, we all have one. I th- I think this is part of it, I think we have a tendency to see certain things as better than others. Right. So why do we see getting five talents as right. better than huh. getting right. one talent? Necessarily. Right. It's mm-hmm. just a different task. Mm-hmm. Right. How does that land for you? Yeah, well, I mean, I think 
it, sh- it like it's, it offers a perspective changes. It's not so much about what you get, but what you're doing with what yeah, you've been given, exactly. yes. right? Because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter in the context of the story who got how many talents. It matters more what they did with the talents they Precisely. were given, yeah. yes. right? Like it's it's kind of irrelevant who got five and who got one. Like you could swap those like those numbers out in the story and it would still be the same, right? right? right. It's more about um, what you do with what you yeah. have. And I think that, you know, that translates. Yeah. But it's still, the master obviously looked at that person's ability and said, nah, don't trust you. And the reason why I gave a guy one, because yeah. he could have guessed, oh, this guy's probably going to squander this away, not do anything. Do you think so? Push back, Mandy. Yeah. I, was, yeah. I uh, don't know. Your mothering heart doesn't want to say that. I yeah. don't know. Like, I mean, that's possible. <laughs> that is possible that he had that perspective. I mean, I guess in the at the end of the day, God has that perspective. But I just don't know if, like, that's what I read, like, as the heart of the parable. I mm. think it's more about, like, y- you know, there are people especially like if we put this on the ground, there are people that have much ability that um, respond the same way as the the one who got one talent, Precisely. right? And there are people who have little, maybe, and like when we look at them, they don't seem like they have much yeah. to offer, but they mm-hmm. give it, like exactly. self, like sacrificially. Like the widow in the temple. Sure, exactly, exactly. yeah, exactly. exactly. So yeah. I don't know. I think um, I think it would be like... Just because you've been given much doesn't necessarily mean that you will steward it well. Right. I do find exactly. some of the most talented people I know can be the most lazy and slothful in Jesus. Oh, totally. Actually, annoying. totally. I right. can name some names, and I won't, but I know some I people that I'm like, if I had your height or your build or your skill set, I would, l- but the drive inside of this guy... I will be in the NBA or something like that. I like that. how wow. he goes immediately to the NBA. That's my <laughs> favorite. That's, that's, NFL. The first that's the thing he dream here. Like, I will be. I'd be in the NBA. I'd be dude, playing LeBron. Listen, man. If I, I had that build, oh, him I'm up. telling you, dude. You, yeah, I I would have been dude, in the championships. Interesting. Wow. Call me Jimmy Buckets. <laughs> I don't think anyone is no. ever going to call you that. Oh. I think the thought. Um, I think. Sorry, uh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah. Um, I think the overriding thought is it's simply just obedience. Yeah. Like, what is the Lord calling you to be obedient to? And like, He didn't say anything about. Like there was, n- there was not meant to be any comparison with who got what, but exactly. simply what they were. The emphasis, I love what you said, Mandy, was like on what you're doing with what you're getting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I also think a, maybe a tangent thought of like how, or even you said this earlier, James, of how like everyone right now wants to be the MLK. It was you. Okay. Yeah. Um, or everyone wants to be the mouthpiece in that sense. And like, yes. I think that's, that's where yeah, I thought you were that's, going. Yeah. How that's just an example of how number one comparison like yeah. mm-hmm. can stop me from being obedient what, to what the Lord's asked me to do, right. mm-hmm. but also um, the guy that took the one and didn't do anything with it was like scared of yeah. the master. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think also a wrong perception of my master or you know what God's calling me to do or who He is even can also cause me to be mm. yeah, complete, completely limited the picture. in what I feel like God's called me to do. It's even interesting, I was just thinking, like, if we kind of, after, like, even just talking about it for a few seconds, get to the point of, like, it's more about what you what you do with what you've been given. It's more about mm. what they did with the parables. But if you think about, even at the beginning of this conversation, when we said, you know, what do you first get when you read this parable? Like, one of the first things we talked about was, like, how many talents have I been yeah, given, exactly. you know? And yeah. it's like, right. that is where your mind first goes. Yeah. But it's like, mm. I think sometimes that's even a ploy of the enemy to you to have us be distracted by what totally. we've been given mm. rather than focus on like stewarding well what we've been given. Yeah, mm. totally. You know, even when you 100%. talk about like different abilities that have been bestowed upon different people, like different like literal talents, you know yeah. what I mean? And uh, it's it can be such a distracting factor to be like, totally. oh, I wasn't given this or like, look at that person they've given this instead of being like, okay, Lord, this is what you have given me. How right. do I, like, honor you with it? How do mm-hmm. I... Yeah, you know? and even even where he says, like, okay, you've done great with this. Now, you've done well with a few things. I'm now going to give you many. Right. We miss that. Like, what's the many? Like, I might have not started with this, but it's this kind of this, like, anticipation of, like, for... there's so much more that can come. Yeah, yeah. yeah of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I... Um... I really appreciate this. I think we're homing in on not what you get, mm-hmm. but what you do with it. Mm-hmm. I think that's really important. I, I think, though, there's there's something to be said, and I want to pull this into justice in just a minute, but I, I want to I wanna press on this first. I think there's something to be said about recognizing 
the number that's been given to you. Mm. What I think is fascinating here, Oof. and I, that's that's just in in uh, sort of in line with what you're saying. Mm-hmm. I, not to fixate on it, right. but when I think like about right. Jesus mm-hmm. when he washes his disciples' feet right. and says, "Even though I am Master and Lord, you see what I've done for yeah. you." So Jesus is not confused. He knows who he is. Mm-hmm. He's not downplaying the fact that he's master and Lord, right. but he's doing something with what's been entrusted to him. Mm-hmm. So is it helpful at times to know sort of where, where we fall in terms of a role that we have, or maybe we've been entrusted with five or three or one? Right. Is it helpful to know that in some way, shape, or form? And let me add to that just before you jump in, mm-hmm. Mandy. I think it's fascinating that he doesn't tell them what to do with this, right. mm-hmm. but they know. Mm-hmm. There's something in wow. them that knows right. that they're supposed to do something with this right. in the context of the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah. Is it no, helpful to know? I think it is. But even Jesus, you know, like he obviously knew what he had been entrusted with at some point. Um, but he also had a lot of things that he could have used as excuses for why sure. he couldn't get to where he was supposed to go. You know, yeah. he was like born into a poor family, born in a nothing town. Like there was, he, Can they, anything good come out of Nazareth? Right, exactly. Like there were, there were a lot of things that maybe, I mean, it's, it's in the scriptures where people looked at Jesus and he wasn't the Messiah that they had, you know, hoped for right. or expected, yeah. you know? And so in some ways, even Jesus didn't, um, like obviously hindsight, we're like, he had everything, you know, but it's sure. like to the people around him that were like rubbing shoulders with him, um, they might've been like, this is a one talent dude. Like right. until sure. he started doing ministry, Love maybe. Certainly, certainly. Small so, thing, maybe. but yeah. I, I guess to answer your question, like, yes, I think it's helpful to know because, um, we, in order for us to steward what we've been given, we have to understand what we've been given. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think right. that's really all I'm driving at. Yeah. Cause I think, I think the danger is to overplay or underplay mm-hmm. what you've been called to do or sure. what you've been given. Totally. Yeah. And I think that so many of us are in one of those two yeah. categories. Oh, totally. We're either underplaying and we're not, we're, we're hiding it. We're scared. We're not right. doing what God's right. called us to do. Or some of us maybe are, we are five talent people or we think we're five talent people and we love to talk about being a five talent person. Right. Mm, right. And I think that that's what you're <laughs> getting at people. with like, sure. this is how the enemy operates mm-hmm. through yeah. lies and deception, yeah. you know, self aggrandizing, mm-hmm. you know? So let's take this into the arena of justice for a minute, because that's part of the way we're trying to read and understand yeah. these parables. If God has entrusted to us roles that we are called to play, mm. how does that work itself out in the context of justice? Is it fair to say then that as people who are commissioned to see the kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven, that we've mm. been poor stewards, that mm. actually we haven't been the five talent person mm. that's been reproducing the, the master's money, mm. but we've been those who have hid it in a field mm. and we've oppressed others and we've been complicit with the structures mm. of the world. Right. Mm. Is it fair to say? And how does that land for you? Unfortunately, yeah. Go, uh, dif- Different seasons for sure, but go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think even personally speaking, like Man, from the grace that I've experienced, the mm-hmm. redemption that I've experienced, the love of God that I've experienced, um, like what gifts those are, mm-hmm. have I been, have I done justice in multiplying that in myself and in people around me, like yeah. showing the love of Jesus, being forgiving, mm-hmm. being kind, um, being slow to speak and understanding, whatever, all these different things we could go down the list. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. So, yeah, when you put it in that perspective, I'm like, I don't know. I don't think I have been. I, mm-hmm. There's no five talents here in that sense is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Or maybe there is. Maybe there's 10. Right. But yeah. you've buried yeah. half of them. Right. Yeah. yeah. Fair. Totally. I, th- I think we sometimes had the mindset of the one talent person. Like, I was scared. I didn't know what oh, to yeah, do. Sure. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. Like, at least in Canada's context, a lot of church ministers are Caucasian. Sure. And the ability for them to speak into the realms of justice when it comes to racism or oppression, and they're, again, the strong Caucasian leader, whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it, like they may have felt, I know in past from talking to many, mm-hmm. like I didn't feel I had the skill set or the right. know knowledge or the. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, even, even, yeah, even, yeah, the, the sway or, or whatever. Can I interject there for a second? Of course you can. So here's what I'm hearing when you say that. 
I didn't know what to do with the talents, yeah. so I buried them. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Do you know what I mean by that, though? Oh, it's and, like, and that's what I, the point I'm I getting didn't at. know what to do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, that language just sounds like that one talent person. Yeah. Exactly. 100%. Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, no, but that's what I was getting at. It's going to be like, well, I didn't know, so therefore, I didn't do anything. Right. right. Yeah. And, and that translates beyond leadership too. Like that's yeah. true in relationship. And oh, I mean, absolutely. when you feel ill-equipped, sometimes mm -hmm. you just want to like stick your head in the sand, you know, or yeah. like 100%. just, or just shy away or tiptoe around or, um, you know, hide behind positive intent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I love that because what we're acknowledging in that moment is the work of multiplying these talents mm -hmm. is hard. It's hard. And I'm scared. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather tiptoe or right. I'd rather remain silent mm -hmm. instead of beginning to like learn and grow and multiply these. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's really the challenge, isn't it? Like it, yeah. the hard part is doing something that's helpful with this. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because when the master comes back, he's like, "There's a you could have put in minimal effort mm -hmm. and still gotten me a decent return on my investment. So what's that minimal, minimal effort? What is that? Yeah, I great like, question. I feel yeah. like, we t I mean, you talked, I've, I don't know if you, this is where you were going, Cody, but you mentioned this in the beginning, a partnership. Mm -hmm. Would you say maybe that's yeah. the minimum? I mean, I think, I, I think at minimum, we're called to recognize what we've mm -hmm. been entrusted with. Right. right. Like if, if this parable is getting at the heartbeat of one thing, it is stewardship. Right. Mm -hmm. And it is a lie from the dragon, from the Satan, that you begin to believe that you have nothing to offer. Right. That's not totally. from the Lord. Totally. That's the voice of condemnation. That's yeah. not God. Mm -hmm. Every single person who's listening, whether you're a one talent to a 300,000 talent person, whatever, I don't know the number, regardless, our calling is the same, that we are in places and situations that right. we are called to steward. Right. Mm -hmm. That God has given us something that we're supposed yeah. to do something with mm -hmm. in right. partnership. Yeah. And I think you're right. I think so many of us are afraid or we've been rendered silent yeah. through some kind of like well, white guilt or yeah, exactly cancel culture. Sure. The master, like, oh, I'm scared of the mat. I was scared to say something mm -hmm. because I thought I would get sure. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Yeah. Didn't say it yeah. right. Written off. See ya. Right. Or it even like starts to manifest as defensiveness too. If you oh, think sure. about it, like the one talent guy could have like it could be interpreted that he was being quite defensive. Like, well, I knew you were harsh. Like, and I knew you were, yeah. no, you had a reputation, you know? Him, and so, out, like, and then all of a sudden right. it's not about what he did it, did or didn't do. It's about like, you're actually like, mean. you're kind of a mean dude. Yeah, and so I was just totally. trying to save my own butt, you know, <laughs> yeah, right. which the defensiveness yeah. we can see probably in like the justice arena too. Oh, yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, I, I just didn't want to get like, I didn't want to get it wrong. I didn't want to say something that totally. was more offensive or something yeah. like that, you yeah. know, like, and then you can start to get defensive. Yeah, um, I mean, we've tried sense. our best to talk a third way. And I think here is another instance of this where I think on both sides, mm -hmm. it's like, I haven't seen you doing what I think you need to be doing. And therefore, you are wrong. You're not mm -hmm. using your talents. But maybe you don't know me. Maybe you don't right. know my story. Maybe right. you don't know what I've been doing. Sure. And on the other side, you right. know, maybe there are people for whom it's like that you're making a ton of noise. Mm -hmm. but you're actually not, still not using the talents, the talents. that God's mm -hmm. been giving wow. to you in the way that he's calling you to totally. partner with him. Mm, totally. Well, There's actually sense, a third yeah. way here for all of mm -hmm. us. And it's a very personal journey, yeah, right? And it's like, especially in our day and age, everybody can look at what everyone else is doing or mm -hmm. posting or saying or participating in, but yeah. this truly, like, it does come back to, like, between you and God. Right, like, obedience. Or, yeah, exactly, like you were saying before, um, mm -hmm. which, I mean, obviously there's something yeah. to be said about public perception, but when it comes to like, are you stewarding like what God has entrusted mm -hmm. you with? Like that's a very personal between you and God thing right. that like, yeah, you're like you were saying like to the, to the outside world, it might look like you aren't, but you are or yeah. vice versa. It might yeah, look yeah. like you're the, the most yeah. like, um, the, the best thing that ever happened for the justice yeah, yeah, yeah. like movement, but maybe you're still not interested being um, stewarding well just, what God has given that's you. That's so like, I love what you said. That's so good. So good. And what you said earlier um, about recognizing, mm. I think is like actually way more clutch or significant than even I'm thinking now. Cause like recognizing that somebody's platform or somebody's way of doing that might be their social media. Mm -hmm. Sure. Of course. Does that mean that that's what I have to do? Mm -hmm. Right. Maybe not. Um, or it might be somebody like the way, I don't know, like, there's so many different things, like the way other people 
are being obedient mm-hmm. to the way the Lord has asked them to do it. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean it's supposed to, it can spark me to be, oh, what? okay, go to the Lord and ask him what he's be, causing me to be obedient to do, mm-hmm. but not necessarily do the same thing. Yeah. And I think even in like, it's so interesting, like even with the Blackout Tuesday post, like mm-hmm. some, I know people that, didn't know about it or had no idea what it was, but just everyone's doing it. And some people are saying, post this, they're just doing it. But I'm like, mm-hmm. what good does that actually do when you have no, even to the partnership thing, you don't actually know what it is, like where it was coming from, what, what the hashtag is with. about, what you're partnering with. And not to say that was bad, but just like, is that actually beneficial yeah. to us as a community mm-hmm. as a whole? If I'm just, oh, shoot, I got to do this yes. right now. Am I burying it by totally. doing that? Yeah, and I, I think that groupthink is a very Mom. prevalent um, soci- uh, sociological and psychological phenomenon. I think we're seeing lots of it, that we're mm-hmm. just being divided mm-hmm. by the voices that are in our own community. Mm-hmm. And we hear those voices over and over and over again until we believe this is the only way and it's the right way. Mm-hmm. Right. And what I'm saying here too is I think part of stewardship is getting together in a room with diverse voices, mm-hmm. having a conversation, and it must be inspired by the Spirit. Because I'm right. here to say that without the Spirit, mm-hmm. we will just replicate what Come we see on. the world doing. Right. Yeah. The Spirit mm-hmm. inspires an ingenuity that only God can right. offer, and we need the spirit right. for this work. This yeah. is part of the dependence. You right. can't invest money or make more money without the money that's given to you. Mm-hmm. And the down payment, Paul says, mm-hmm. is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the down payment of your salvation. Wow. Mm-hmm. Now, I want to—I didn't want to go here just yet, but I think we're naturally moving this way. There's serious consequences that are offered in the context of this parable. Right. Jesus uses mm-hmm. um, many different metaphors for what we conventionally call call hell Mm -hmm. or uh, destruction or punishment or judgment. This is one of the metaphors that he often uses. Uh, They'll be thrown into outer darkness Mm -hmm. where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's a serious kind of judgment that that will accompany a lack of stewardship. Mm -hmm. How does that land for you? Man. Brings back that fear. Scary. (laughs) Yeah. Scary, 100%. -hmm. You know, you know the great throne of judgment whatever yeah, we, all, we all we uh, all hold an 19. account uh, give an account for our life and i think that's for me man it's like oh lord and i th- yeah i think i'm doing some decent things but i'm like you're doing great <laughs> am i really hitting that potential yeah. yeah am i thinking i'm lesser than this or that am i playing it safe. Literally, I was sitting in this room last night, and the Lord was like, you're living with an underlying fear in your life. I'm like, okay, okay. To our question, you know, Lord yeah, yeah, rebuke me. Yeah. And it was like, I'm like, well, why? He's like, because again, you've stepped out in faith, and maybe it hasn't happened, or you've ex- believed for something or expected something, and maybe it hasn't happened, and, and n- therefore you now play it safe, and just hang out because you don't want to put the shame mm-hmm. or look like a fool sure. or yeah. um, just, you know, not take risks. And, and, and I am scared of that day in some sense, not because I think I'm going to end up in, you know, whatever, yeah. but just the like, for me to then at the end of my life to say, I did, I left some on the court. I didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't give it all. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I, I could have gave more. Yeah. That's for me the biggest thing that I just think about on a regular basis. Am I, am I giving, am I giving it all? Or am mm-hmm. I, am I living at 75%? Mm-hmm. Right. Wow. Yeah. I mean, there is this, there is that line, right? Well done, good and faithful servant. Mm-hmm. You know, like the words that I think we all Faithful. so desperately long to hear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that word could be allegiant, mm-hmm. one who has actually walked the long road of obedience. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you know, I think, I wanna, I wanna chat about this. This is a bit of a tangent. We'll come back to the judgment piece. But I remember when this sort of all started. And I think, you know, I had the privilege of studying with some really incredible people. And early on in my faith, mm-hmm. I had a deep understanding of the kingdom gospel. And I knew that because the gospel was a kingdom gospel and not just an atonement gospel. It wasn't mm-hmm. just the blood covers you so that you can go to heaven when you die. It was mm-hmm. that Jesus is actually doing something to inaugurate the kingdom of God here and now. He's mm-hmm. actually bringing shalom and restoration and healing. Mm-hmm. And so as far back as I can remember in my faith, I've been talking about how the gospel intersects with politics mm-hmm. and justice and race and all of these things. And I've tried to do my best as a voice to mm-hmm. be a voice that talks about these things. Sure. And 
yet at the beginning of COVID, and Jared can testify to this, I just felt utterly silenced. Mm. Like I've been talking about these things long before marches or rallies mm. or 2020. And in spite of that, I still felt as though if mm. I say something or if I say the wrong thing, or if I try to be a voice about justice or use my platform mm -hmm. in these ways, someone's just gonna try to take me mm -hmm. down. Right. And it was Jer who actually said to me, I think that's actually a lie of the enemy. Mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. actually a spirit that's trying to attach mm -hmm. itself to you. Mm -hmm. And that was, that, was, that was a hard season and journey for me, to be really mm -hmm. honest. And I was listening to Black mm -hmm. Voices and reading, which I've tried to do through this whole season as much mm -hmm. as possible. Mm -hmm. And yet even still, just that fear, you know, mm -hmm. of like, Lord, oh. am I doing the right things with this? Mm -hmm. And I think before this season, I would have said yes. And yet in the midst of it, with all the confusion, I just, mm -hmm. I don't know, it just felt dark. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's, a, that's just a tangent. I just resonate no, with that. Yeah. 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 So I good. wonder. Judgment. I mean, I don't. For, I want to hear you two on this. I don't think this is intended to inspire fear. Mm -hmm. I think it's supposed mm -hmm. to be a kind of sober reality. Yeah, I, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like for me, it just like I feel the weight of. <laughs> Not Ross going, but his heaviness <laughs> just, resting on me. Yeah, no, I just feel the weight of. Um, am I pouring my time, my energy, my life into the right things you know and because I'm always somebody who I feel like goes hard after things mm. but it just like the, yeah there's this kind of like okay Lord like it draws me back into like intimacy with God because I'm like God I really want to know that I am like going after the things that you have entrusted me with right. not just the things that I have picked up because um, I wanted to you right. know and, or whatever or the things that felt easy or the things that felt um, natural for me mm. um, but when it comes to like my own life it draws me back to yeah like am Lord am I am I pouring myself into the right things um, yeah yeah that's good yeah I think even back to the the beginning there where it says like well done slave I'm like I'm either a slave to righteousness or I'm a slave to my sin. Mm -hmm. And there's like, there's no other, there's no, other, there's no in between. Yeah. Um, but often I think just with the rhythm of life and how much we put into like all these different, well, personally, how much I put into different things, I'm more so in the in between, yeah. but recognizing that there isn't an in between. So right. if this Can't is, lukewarm. exactly, if this is yeah. the truth and it requires everything mm -hmm. of me, it kind of gives like, I think when abandoned. you're putting into perspective, I'm like, it kind of shifts that fear because mm. I think that fear can like cause me mm. to like stay outside the door. But yeah. when you recognize and embrace it a little bit more, mm. that fear channels yeah. or changes into like yeah. a fear of like a fear of the Lord in like a holy reverent yeah. kind of yeah. way of like, man, if I want to be a slave to anything, mm. I want to yeah, be yeah. a slave to your righteousness Absolutely. Yeah. and be obedient. That's so I think that's just what I think about. I'm just Absolutely. like, am I like... Practically speaking, yeah. yeah, what am I giving my allegiance to? Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But here's the other side of it for me is he, he does say, like, if you've been trusted with little, I will give you much. Right. And I've always prayed this prayer. I'm like, Lord, don't give me more than I can steward. Don't use me for revival. Don't whatever, 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 until I have the character to steward the calling that you've placed on my life. Mm. Like, don't do that. And it's shown really here. Obviously, the five-talent guy, he, again, to his ability, mm. he entrusted him. Right. And I think that's the piece that, again, to your, what you said, the long obedience in the same direction. Totally. Shout out Eugene Peterson. Um, Friedrich Nietzsche originally. <sighs> okay. <laughs> One up Eugene Peterson, RIP, but I mean, it's fine. RIP Friedrich Nietzsche. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A long, a much longer, but um, he, he gives according to, to even to your season. I think that's the piece right. that I have grace for myself and just understanding is that, hey, I'm on a journey of growing and becoming right. a five-talent person. Journey. Totally. But I'm not always there yet, and right. I think God has grace for understanding the season. Mm -hmm. And again, for you, that it's like may have been a difficult season and, and opportunity to step up, and even though you've done the work, you've done the research, you've done the reaching out, you've done the serving, in this season was difficult. And it doesn't yeah, mean in a future totally. season he wasn't refining you in this one totally. to then speak in a greater way. It's interesting, actually, that you say that because even I'll say this, like even in that season of you, Cody, feeling like this oppression, essentially, of yeah. just like, I don't know, he was still comforting me. 
Mm-hmm. And so I think that goes to speak, like, Thanks, even God. in the sense of, like, and me being like, I don't know what the heck is, like, mm-hmm. to feel. I'm yeah. having stuff come up that I felt like I processed totally. and mm-hmm. hadn't. And mm-hmm. Cody was there. Mm-hmm. And I think there's something that goes to show what, what you're saying, that long obedience, mm-hmm. that long journey of faithful. obedience and faithfulness. Not good, not talented, not totally. whatever, faithful. And it's that's, like that's in that faithfulness, it, you'll and in, see fruit and of, like, helping exactly. people where you don't. And realize that you are exactly and in in for example the realm of the justice world i'm reading this book by nelson mandela the biography a long walk to freedom like he was in prison for 27 years yeah like we think that these things sometimes can be flipped and turned overnight, overnight. but it is that long journey mm-hmm. like of of continuing to pursue and i think that's something in my Christian walk, in my in my interaction with social justice, in my whatever it is, is it's like we just need to get better every day. Yeah, every day, little right. by little, little by little, little by little, and continually totally. seeking God. And you know, I've been I've been saying this for uh, the several years now. I think that you know, coming into uh, the church and Christian faith mm-hmm. a little bit later in life, I realize that a big emphasis is placed on hell as a fear tactic to get people saved yeah, so they can totally. go to heaven. Like that's been mm-hmm. a big thing. What I mm-hmm. found interesting as I've read the scriptures is the bigger emphasis is on judgment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The biggest emphasis is not on hell. The biggest emphasis in the scriptures and the New Testament is that you will be judged. Mm -hmm. That's a way of saying you will be held account for the way Mm -hmm. that you steward. Mm -hmm. And I know this is unpopular, but judgment in the scriptures is by works. Mm -hmm. You will be judged based on what you do with your works. Now, I want to clarify, works based on having the spirit and being able to do the works Mm -hmm. that God's called you to do. It's partnership, exactly. So it's the works knowing that you've actually been unionized with Christ Mm -hmm. and you're invited into this. But I want to come back around here because I think that these conversations always end up in such a globalized realm. That's just a way of saying, I feel like we talk so broadly. Sure. And I think that's okay, but I think that these conversations always end up feeling like we need to make sure that everybody inside and outside of the church is stewarding with what God has given them or whatever. Mm. And I think the problem with that is we forget that people outside the church don't have the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. They're trying to bring about some sort of secular humanist revival without the Spirit and without the kingdom. Mm -hmm. They're trying to bring about a utopian society that Mm -hmm. they're not even really capable of bringing about. They've been entrusted with talents, but they don't even know who the master is. They think they got the talents on their own. The kingdom without the king. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. And so, I I don't know, I wonder how that lands for you guys. Like, as you look at the culture, as we begin to sort of land this conversation, just maybe for the church, Mm -hmm. like, the scriptures are a word to the people of God. Mm -hmm. We're not talking here in this parable or any of the parables about what we're supposed to try to push on society and culture. We're talking about who we are called to be as a signpost of heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those who are following, in the language of one of my rabbis, in the systemic order of the lamb Mm -hmm. and not following the way of the dragon. So I don't know. I I wonder just like how that lands for you when you think about being entrusted with abilities. Like maybe what advice do you have for people Mm -hmm. as they figure out what their abilities are or areas that they can steward talents and abilities? Mm -hmm. I don't know. What what advice do you have or what would you say to somebody who's hearing this and they're thinking, man, maybe I'm not stewarding those talents or abilities. Maybe I don't know what I'm doing. What would you Mm -hmm. say to them? I, I think the first thing I say. What is it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, is uh, I don't know. I could be totally left field, but just like, I maybe I'm. Yeah, I'll use the word gift. It's the mm-hmm. Holy Spirit. Um, so if there's like an overwhelming feeling, stress. I don't know what my talent is. I don't know what this. Do I have three? Do I have two? Whatever. The first one is the gift of the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. and to maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, par- like just ask the Holy Spirit and like trust that mm-hmm. partnership. He'll reveal it. I think that's the first thing. And like stewarding that. Mm-hmm. And people say this, even in the context of relationships, you'll never be able to steward your relationship if you like with a person, if you can't with the Lord or you mm-hmm. can't with the Holy Spirit. And so it's good mm-hmm. for me. Be 100 percent. Find, find your place, find your role, find your voice. Figure out what talent you were gifted and given. And you can do that through, again, uh, reflecting and examining what you've done in the past. Okay, I know I can do this because I've done it. You know, one of the most important things about school that trains you is that, hey, I can actually learn and accomplish something and get a degree or get Mm -hmm. a diploma or whatever. Uh, That's super important. So I just encourage people to figure out What's your place? What's mm-hmm. what's your spot? And it's not that you can't advance, but be content with 
Lord, you've put this in my heart, so therefore yeah. I'm going to do it. I'm going to dream big, yeah. but I'm going to, again, you're the one that's going to bring the increase, yeah. and I'm going to be faithful in my spot right. and be okay with totally. it. Totally. I mean, and I think when you say that, I think like maybe stewardship for so many of us mm -hmm is hearing a diversity of voices. It's mm. being an active agent for justice with your next door neighbors and right. with your right. friends mm -hmm. instead of thinking that you're going to be the voice that you know rallies the movement that changes the world. Totally. And I think so many of us have bought into this mentality right. as though actually it's maybe not so much, um, I would say, smaller than that. Mm -hmm. right. And smaller not as in bad, but just smaller as in like our position or place. Right. Isn't and there it, even that? Sorry. No, so no, sorry. But that rent... Um, like the kingdom of the heaven, the kingdom of heaven starts like a, at a mustard seed. Yeah. Like it's a, like it's as simple as picking up a piece of garbage. You don't know mm -hmm. how far that goes in the totally. kingdom of God. Yeah. In a sense. So yeah, I think mm -hmm. of one of my one of my heroes is an Anglican poet and priest named George Herbert. Herbert. And Herbert was uh, oh. he had one of the most prestigious posts as a lecturer at a really major college in the UK. And he left that post to go pastor a small Anglican church of a couple hundred people mm. wow. because he, he just felt as though uh, it was more important and the Lord had called him to be there. Mm. Right. And I just, I, I'm so compelled by that idea. It's mm. good. Anyway, Mandy? It's good. Stewardship. <sighs> yeah. I th uh, are you thinking what would the advice yeah, I would have for other people? I think that, um, like even when we were talking about how sometimes we have these expectations on the whole entire world, right. um, but this is really um, instruction from God to the church. Mm. Um, I think like if you are a follower of Jesus, it's just remembering to even look internally before you look around and right. kind of uh, make decisions about what everyone else around you is doing or even compare what you're doing to what other people are doing because it's kind of like what we've been talking about um, someone might be doing something really great, but it might not be what you're called to do. And so it's, I mean, I kind of align with what you guys were saying too, just like about finding like, finding your place, finding what God has entrusted you with. Um, and sometimes that takes some like digging in your own life yeah. and in your own, and sometimes it's about like, what are you surrounded with? Like literally, what do your days look like? Right. Yeah. You know, What's where do you spend you? your time? What's in front totally. of you? Um, and how can you start there? If you're like, I'm not even like, I'm, I don't work with people experiencing homelessness. Like mm -hmm. I don't work in a diverse community. It's like, okay, well, even if you don't, like you can still start with whatever mm -hmm. is in front of you, you know? And so, um, yeah, totally. like, th like don't despise small beginnings, I guess, mm -hmm. even when it comes to stuff like this. Um, but be willing to, because even mm -hmm. when you think about, even if, say, you are called to be a mouthpiece, mm -hmm. if you are called to be a mouthpiece, but you can't, like, honor what's in front of you, if you yeah. can't love the person who you rub shoulders Hello. with every day, like, you probably shouldn't be given that platform anyways, mm -hmm. you know, until you've kind of, like, honed and uh, stewarded the small things. Yeah, totally. So I was thinking too of mentors and yeah. people in your life. Totally. Um, and I think that we have this fear uh, so often. I think one of the most bold things you can do is go to a few mentors, people you really trust, mm -hmm. totally. and say, what are the gifts that <laughs> you see that God has given me? Mm -hmm. And yeah. how can I use those? And I think we don't because we're afraid because we want them to say the thing that we want instead sure. of maybe the thing that's true. Yeah. <laughs> and I just want to say like, Stop until you're willing drums. to hear the <laughs> truth, Mm -hmm. You will never be the best steward you can be for what right. God has called you to do. Right. And I think that's just so important for us to remember that, yeah. that we, good, and once we hear it to then put in the work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for me, what's funny is um, I I'm saying this uh, because it's happened to me several times. I've had people who have come to me and have said something like, I want to do what you do, or I want to be able to, you know, uh, talk about the kind of academic things you talk about. And I, the first thing I ask them is if they're actually willing to do the work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like it's lonely, Most of the time. it's Dude. hard. This guy can it's going to take work, eight hours and rigor. Day. I'm just like get me uh, out and of I, there. I, when I think of stewardship, that's what I think about. Do the and I, work. I feel like I get laughed off a chair half the time for the person that I am. But the reality is this: I know from mentors and from the Holy Spirit with clarity what God's called me to do, and right. I put all my efforts into that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I am. On, I am investing that's all true. of the talents in the thing that God has asked me to do. Wow. And I mean, and, love you for and it. that costs that costs something is all I'm saying. Hundred percent. Um, but I'm with you, James. I just don't want to get there. Like, I just don't want to get there. Yeah. And and I I don't want to be called a wicked and lazy slave. Gosh, Jesus. Oh. And so we were saying this last night, and so I want to say it again here. You know, I think one of the invitations, maybe out of this parable, beyond what Jer said, which is just ask the Holy Spirit to slow down. Um, I was just saying, like maybe ask the Holy Spirit, like, you know, 
what in me is not of you? Like what mm-hmm. needs to be stripped away? Right. Yeah. Um, what mm-hmm. are the motives or the ego that needs to be killed yeah. so that I can actually begin mm-hmm. to steward what you've given me right. yeah. uh, for your good and for your mm-hmm. kingdom and for your glory. Mm-hmm. Come on. Yeah. Well, with that being said, wow. we want to thank you for coming so to the show today, tonight, whenever you're watching it. Um, uh, we are having our tracks at Tila Ministry School launch w- next week. Uh, we're on reading break uh, next week, so it's actually in two weeks from now. But we want to invite you to be a part of that, our leadership track and worship track. If you want to apply or audit, uh, you're more than welcome to do that. Just go to our website or uh, hit up Mandy, and uh, we'll be able to get you locked and loaded for training and helping, again, shape, steward, uh, build a community around you to help you build the gifts and the calling and the talent on your life. So we love you. And if you want to sow into this, uh, again, you can do that at tlyyc.ca. Uh, and we are so grateful for our community. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to our producers, shout out, tech team, all our amazing uh, team around us. We could not do this without you. And uh, man, wasn't the worship night good last week? It Gosh, wow. it was fire. So fire. More of those to come. We'll see you soon. Hey, thanks so much for joining us today at Tehillah Talks. We hope you enjoyed the show. And if you did, we just want to encourage you to like it, share it, give us a review on podcasts, on Spotify, or wherever you stream this. And we just want to uh, encourage you to also follow us. And if you want to sow into what these conversations are doing for our city here in Calgary, we want to encourage you to sow. You can check us out and give at tehillahyyc.ca and uh, get involved with what is going on here via Tehillah. Thanks so much. Love you so much. Have a great day.